Hello YouTube. Hello Fish Tank TV. I'm back again with another in my series of explanations of the Wallstead method. This is the second in the series. And if you haven't caught the first one, I highly recommend you go back and check out the introduction to the Wallstead video and it'll explain uh, quite a few details around the Wallstead method, around the concept uh, that might make this video a little bit easier to grab. Okay, So this video is going to be focused on what I consider to be the hub of the Wallstead method. It's the whole reason why in my mind it really works and that's the plants. Okay, um, It's why we put dirt in the tank. It is beneficial to just even the psychology of the plants, let alone the water chemistry. Um, it's, it's the hub as far as I'm concerned, as, as I said. So I'm going to talk about plants and their roles in the aquarium primarily uh, around water filtration, right, and water chemistry and how they may help maintain it. Uh, two parts we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about how plants act as water purifiers. Uh, both with heavy metals and ammonia. Okay, um, first we're going to talk about the heavy metals, uh, and then we'll go a little bit more into the ammonia. So ammonia is actually the most important, but believe it or not, uh, heavy metals actually play a huge role in uh, what plants do too. And uh, sometimes there's some scenarios where uh, we have quite a bit of a certain type of metal uh, that may actually affect the plants, and we'll talk about that towards the end as well. So. You know, as I said, one of the one of, so one of the core aspects of the Wallstead method is the planted tank, right? Keyword there, planted, right? Uh, so plants can actually protect fish from toxic chemicals in the water, like ammonia, nitrate, and even heavy metals, which we're going to talk about now. Uh, plants are the original water filters. If you look at a lot of what's going on now in terms of you know lakes and even water purification plants in some parts of the country down south where I live it's it's pretty predominant is they use waters as a primary filtration for plants I have a huge pond out in the back of in my backyard I did not dig that that was put there as part of the uh, the infrastructure uh, as as a runoff purification right so all the water that comes in the stormwater everything is all purified by plants right uh, so they do a huge job right plants actually do a better job than you know anything else that you could find in nature in terms of purifying plants they take up heavy metals they their their decaying leaves create humic substances similar to peat right peat's a humic substance um, which uh, actually help detoxify metals and they readily take up ammonia and nitrites okay as part of their uh, photosynthetic process and storing chemicals, etc. So let's talk about heavy metals a little more. So what the heck do I mean by heavy metals? Well, uh, there's, a, there's a whole list of them. I won't name them all, but the ones that usually we're most familiar with and, and concerned about are mercury, uh, copper, uh, zinc, cadmium, and, uh, and actually in, in large enough quantities, even iron that we normally use as fertilizers can be uh, quite toxic in large doses. So, uh, and by large doses, I mean large doses to fish, not large doses to humans, because what's non-toxic to us could be very toxic to the fish. Um, but basically, all those, uh, I think cadmium is another one, if I remember right. Uh, all, all those are, are, are toxic to aquarium life in doses that are far smaller than uh, than we humans would uh, would deem toxic, right? Uh, but mercury and copper are the most toxic, right? And uh, for those of you who have been keeping fish for a while, you even know that, that copper, say for example, is extremely toxic to invertebrates, even more so than, than fish. So um, you can see that it varies, even, even in aquarium life itself, the level of toxicity varies even between the types of, of life that's in the aquarium. Um, now, actually to make things even more confusing, the, the toxicity of, of like a certain concentration of, of, of a particular metal, because each one is different, right, is also varied by the pH, right, the water hardness and the level of dissolved organic carbon that's found in the water, okay. Uh, even uh, in general, 
it's because of some basic physics that deal with positive and negatively charged ions, right? Uh, if you haven't hit that in science class yet, maybe you're, you're, you're a young guy or girl just starting out, uh, you know, positives and negatives, you've heard opposites attract, right? It's like magnets. Think of everything as like magnets. Positives and negatives attract. So what happens is, is if there's not enough positives or negatives, depending on the type of metal it is, it may or may not uh, it che is cheat it and, and bind it and make it safe. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But that's basically what we're looking for is we're looking for dissolved organic carbons and we're looking for humic substances and things like that, plant matter, basically, uh, that's able to bind to minute particles of metal and render them inert for, for all intents and purposes uh, as far as the fish go, right? So <clears throat> the basic physics, positive and negative charged ions, um, cause the, the, the metals to bind, as I was saying. And, uh, you know, so let's take an example, maybe make it a little easier, uh, soft acidic water. And lo and behold, so here's my 47 gallon Wallstead South American cichlid tank, right? Um, now it's not a biotope, but it does have water that's slightly softer than my normal tap water, okay? Now soft water comes with its own concerns when it comes to heavy metal, right? Um, soft water actually has a, has, a, has a greater problem with metal toxicity than hard water uh, with the same metal concentrations. So all things being equal, it has, it has harder problems. Um, so what happens eventually is that because there's nothing in the water or the environment to bind to, metals bind with the first available receptor, that's the positive or the negative ion, right? Uh, at the cellular level inside the fish, okay? That's where it ends up. If the plants don't take it out, if the water can't take it out because of the plant material that's in it, the fish end up with it. That's where the problem becomes really evident for us as, as aquarium keepers, all right? Uh, without digging too much into the biology of it, and you can, you're more than welcome to look that up, uh, or I can talk about it in a later video if I get enough requests, uh, the metal ends up replacing other important metals inside the body's chemistry. So one metal will push another more important metal out, right? And uh, we'll end up affecting things like uh, um, nerve function, brain function, uh, or even respiration at the cellular level. So at, at the individual cell level, uh, you know, the, we'll, we'll actually lose the ability to absorb oxygen and, and maintain it. So uh, that is ultimately what ends up happening to a fish when, when it dies is any one of a number of different things that the metal affects the body chemistry, throws it out of whack, and the fish ends up dying or, or, or suffering, right? Okay. So you heard me mention dissolved organic content, DOC, which I explained in, in my last video. So DOC has the greatest capacity to bind with and detoxify metals, right? And DOC is obviously made up of some decaying plant matter as well. If you have plants in your tank, you have DOC. Um, if you're running carbon, you're actually pulling the DOC out why a lot of people are uh, opposed to running carbon in their filters. It doesn't mean you don't have to, but obviously it's stripping out some very important aspects of the water that play a role in a healthy aquarium. It doesn't mean that you can't have a healthy aquarium running carbon, but it may make things a little bit more difficult, right? It may make the water chemistry fluctuate a little bit. Um, but DOC is most commonly something that we see as tannins in the water, right? So if your water is a little bit yellowy because of maybe you've got wood in there, um, it's releasing tannins into the into the water. Peat will do the same thing if you're running a, a, a soft soft water uh, aquarium, you're running peat in your filter maybe to keep it soft, keep the pH down. You're gonna see tannins in the water. That's mostly the, the, uh, the typical dissolved organic carbon that you see, that you can see is gonna be tannins. So you have that yellowing water and that's Usually why most people run carbon that and, and maybe sometimes a smell issue, if, if, but that's usually not associated with planted aquariums that are healthy. Um, but majority of dissolved organic carbon or DOC is not seen, okay? Um, you know, when you realize that activated carbon strips out the DOC, you begin to see why it's not as widely accepted. Well, I said that already, but um, you know, clear water comes at a price, I guess is, is basically the idea. Uh, if you've got your, if you've got the DOC, it helps bind with the metals. You know that, that that's a good thing. If you're stripping it out, it's a little bit harder to bind to the metals. Uh, so you know there's there's, there's other opportunities to to uh, is cheat the metal or bind it, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So 
the artificial chelators, right? Those are the things that we put in the water and I use it too. Uh, it's typically a dechlorinator. Um, you have to look on the back of your bottle to see specifically if it binds metals, if it has a, it has a chelator called EDTA is usually how it's called. Um, that is the typical component uh, to help bind metals in, in water treatment. And, and that's fine to use. You know, I think we all use it. I know I use it. Um, and it definitely does not hurt. Um, most of it will get rid of the chlorine, the chloramine, um, and then it'll also get rid of uh, and help bind the heavy metals and uh, you know, basically make them inert and keep the fish safe. So those EDTAs will actually bind even in hard water making good water treatment a safe practice. But plants will actually continue that role as these bind metals that leach back into the water column when light breaks down that bond. So, so once you have EDTA in there and it's bound those metals, the light from your aquarium is actually going to, over time, break down those bonds again and those, those metals are actually going to creep back up into the water column, right? Um, if you do a lot of heavy water changes uh, or regular water changes, you're likely not going to see this occur because you're taking out enough water on a regular basis that um, you're, you're basically circumventing that issue. But again, in the Wallstead method, we're talking about tanks that are mature enough that you can go three, six, eight weeks a month, maybe longer, without taking out any water, maybe just topping it off due to evaporation. So the concerns around metals leaching back up into the water column are a little bit more of a bigger concern. Uh, and that's where the plants actually pick up and help lengthen your lifespan of your water. Okay. Um, the, so the slow release uh, of metals into the water, the plants will then take them up and store them in their tissue for later use, right? Because plants will use all of those metals at some point or they will just take them up and store them, right? Uh, high concentrations of, of, of certain metals like iron, and we talked about this before, uh, even though we use it as a fertilizer, seriously high concentrations of iron in slow growing plants are going to look like, uh, typically like, like, like brown spots on the leaves. You'll get these brown spots that develop on the leaves. That's actually the iron store in the plants. Um, the reason why you don't see it in in faster growing plants in the same aquarium is because they typically go so fast, uh, grow so fast that the, the, uh, the excess metals are diluted by the growth. And so you don't see the same reaction as you would in a slow plant that stores it for a much longer period of time. Okay. This is one of, you know, many reasons Wallstead tanks can go so long without water changes, the way the plants behave, their uptake of their metal, etc. cetera. Um, because as I've said, there's a balance where plants help manage, in this case, the metal content in the water, even when artificial means are used for, for short term. So EDTA is, 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 is short term in the, in, the, in, the, in the context of the Wallstead method. Um, <clears throat> but plants pick up where we leave off with our chemicals and take it to the next level, right? and they do it consistently and they do it for a longer period of time. As long as the plants are growing and receiving enough light, they're going to they're going to continue that function, okay? So it's it it revolves around keeping fish is all about water chemistry, uh, and in this case it's all about keeping plants. And keeping plants will help you keep your fish better. There's there's no two ways about it. Uh, you know, without the plants, regular water changes just become needed even when you know, just metal toxicity is a concern, if you, especially uh, if your water in your part of, in, in, wherever you are in the world, you know, your water may have higher, higher or lower concentrations of metal content, depending on the, the quality of the water, if it's well water versus city water, and even city to city is, is, is very different. But plants help keep that balance, and plants make it easy for us to keep the fish happy. So in my next video, which should be coming out pretty shortly, we we'll talk a little bit more about plant toxicity when it comes to ammonia and nitrates and nitrites. Okay, uh, those are those are three big key chemicals that end up in the water and build up quite quickly. So 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 metal is pretty easy to take take a hold of and get managed, but ammonia is probably one of the biggest fish killers there is. 
um, nitrates and nitrites and, and, and the entire cycle, which I will not be discussing in great detail, the ammonia cycle of, of, of a tank, but we will talk specifically about ammonia and nitrates and nitrites and how the plants will help, help keep that down. Uh, give you a good example in nice lead-in, my tanks, no matter when I test them, unless I did something wrong uh, or I have too many fish in, zero ammonia, zero nitrates, zero nitrites every time. I could test this all day long, every day, and it's always the same. Even three weeks before a water change, three weeks between water changes, it's still the same. So very important. Plants are very important. We'll talk about that in the next series. So hope you like it. Um, rate it. Subscribe. Leave comments. I'll answer as much as I can. Uh, you subscribe to me. I will definitely subscribe back to you. If I have not subscribed back to you and you're watching this, um, you know, Shoot me a comment or an email and say, hey, you know, stop being so lazy and subscribe to me. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for watching it. I hope this I hope you find this really, really informative and I hope this helps you keep fish. Thank you. Bye.